much bigger effects in California. I'm here to say that you and the class before you began Southwestern's turnaround. Thank you. We were all ready. be indebted to you. I was actually working with a document that I started maybe the second year I came where we took a very long look at our record and we have a 21 year history where we're among other things measuring the distance from the California ABA pass rate. And I want you to know that you and the class before you in that 21 year history, rank eighth and ninth. Wow. You're above the median and very, very high. You had the determination and the grit and the supportiveness of one another to get this job done. And I know uh, from Mary Basic and the many of staff who work with her, she's that she predicted that you would do this based on what you were like working with so many of you. So, so congratulations and thank you. But it wouldn't be right, it wouldn't be fair if I didn't talk tonight about the classmates and friends that, that aren't here tonight to be sworn in and how we all have a job to do to help them. Um, I know that you've been supportive of one another through law school and beyond, and your support now is more important than ever. Um, the bar is uh, releasing now for the first time in modern history person-specific data to the individuals who didn't pass, that is by question information. Uh, we really need your help to encourage people you know who didn't pass to share that with us if they uh, but where they supported you, they understood, and I'd like to ask you all to thank them tonight, too. <laughs> Serving as a lawyer, you will be able to draw on those challenges. You've overcome them. You will meet new challenges. Some of them may feel similar. Some of them may feel very different. But you can do it, and you will. And we look forward to watching your careers from the faculty standpoint, learning about them, learning from you, and having you involved, as so many Southwestern alums are with current students. So now, the, um, the task that that phrase doesn't hold up because we could not get the job done tonight without the two of them. <laughs> Bill is, as many of you already know because you've heard her speak before, an extraordinary person. Um, she is an extraordinarily effective speaker. I have to say one of the very most effective of those I've been privileged to listen to in my very long lifetime. She isn't only well prepared, and she is certainly that, but she is also determined to make remarks that will have an impact on her audience. She's determined that those of us who are privileged to hear her will be affected by what she has to say. She deeply wants us to become more effective, more purposeful, more aware of ourselves and the world around us. We're, of course, very proud to have such a person counted among our many extraordinary alumni. As a student, she was involved in the court. She left law school for the district attorney's office where she worked for many, many years and uh, was recognized 
uh, and rewarded again and again, but ultimately when Governor Jerry Brown appointed her to the Superior Court in 2010. Deborah has been, in recent years, also the president of the Alumni Association. She demonstrated those determined qualities that got her years ago to the point where you are now, and then all those achievements thereafter, she on the board into that work. She has high standards, and she holds the rest of us to them, and that's good for us all. Now, immediately following Judge Brazil's state swearing in, Dean and Professor of Law Doug Wasman will present the class members who wish to practice in federal court to Judge Wright. Judge Wright was born in Tuskegee, Alabama, a year or so before the Tuskegee Airmen returned to the U.S. At the, at the end of World War II. As a young man, he joined the Marine Corps, and after that service, he had the good judgment to choose to live in Southern California, <laughs> where he joined the L.A. County Sheriff's Department as a deputy sheriff. He earned his undergrad degree from Cal State L.A., and then, fortunately for us, he decided to attend law school at Southwestern. He began his legal career as a Deputy California Attorney General, and then went on to practice as a civil litigator. Comments, I want to make a couple of points. First of all, it's never going to get old for you to say, I passed. <laughs> <laughs> and quite honestly, I was so touched by hearing you all say you're, that you passed, I felt sort of emotional because you're going to remember this feeling for the rest of your life. The only thing that surpassed this feeling for me in my career outside of my family was when I was appointed by the governor to my current position. So relish in this moment, and it's going to come back every time the bar results are released. <laughs> I want to send a special congratulations to those of you who are repeat bar takers. Those of you who are sitting in this room who felt the disappointment at not passing. And I want to say this to each of you. <laughs> that wasn't planned. Because I would have done something, you know, a little different, like Beyonce or something. <laughs> but I want to say to those of you who found the strength of character and determination to believe in yourself and find it deep inside you to put aside your disappointment and rally and do what it takes to sit for the bar again, psychologically, intellectually, and emotionally, you are going to be even more successful in measure because of what you discovered in today. Possibly half of the people in that courtroom did not pass the bar the first time, no matter what school they went to. I sit on the bench with people who graduated from Harvard and Yale and other Ivy League schools who did not pass the California bar the first time. So, don't hang your head at all for that. You pass just like the rest of us. Also, following up on what Dean Craver said regarding offering support to the people who aren't here. Dean Craver, thank you for that introduction. It was far too long. <laughs> Welcome to all the family members who are here to share in this very joyous moment. You have so much to be proud of from your loved ones who worked very hard and sacrificed a lot to get here today. Congratulations to all of you. Your hard work paid off. And I don't know about you, but I worked very hard to pass the bar. And I'm not ashamed to admit it. And frankly, when people say I didn't work hard, I don't believe them. And when people our lawyers say they don't work hard, I don't respect them. <laughs> so take in this moment, because it's a joyous one that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. I also want you to think about the privilege that you have to be part of truly the 1%. And I'm not talking 1% economics derived. I'm talking about the privilege of being educated as a lawyer and licensed to practice. It's not just a license to practice, it's a license 
to change someone else's life. You are going to have people who come to you with a very significant and real problem. Child custody, child adoption, a will. Where are their worldly possessions going to go when they die? Estate planning, copyright, contracts, family law, a divorce, a victim of a crime, a defendant accused of a crime, someone who has a business deal that went bad. In any number of ways, you are now licensed to practice in any of those areas. You can hang out a shingle tomorrow, provided you get malpractice insurance. <laughs> So think about it for a moment, the awesomeness of that. And I don't mean, oh, awesome. I mean the enormity and the awesome responsibility that comes with someone putting their life in your hands. Your judgment, your education, your preparedness. People are going to depend on you. And there's no greater privilege as a human being than to have someone place their trust and belief in you. And that's what we do as lawyers. We help people solve problems. So in my time before you, I want to remind you of the privilege that you have to help other people. Because that privilege is a privilege to make a difference in people's lives. And that's what you've achieved today. Your clients, they're going to depend on you. They're going to place their trust in you. So I'm asking you to decide today what type of lawyer you're going to be. Set your intention before you leave this room today or before you go to bed tonight. If you haven't got your bar number in the mail or by email, but you're gonna get it. You're gonna get a bar card and you're going to have digits that you're going to remember. You might not know your friend's cell phone numbers because they're programmed into your phone. You might not know other numbers anymore, I don't. But you're gonna remember your bar number. It's your privilege to have that bar number. So please decide what kind of attorney you're going to be. Are you gonna have a positive attitude? Are you going to be professional at all times? and including times when you don't want to be because the judge has ruled against you, which happens every single day. Or a client who's difficult and challenging. You have to decide for yourself, are you going to be the attorney that is professional to opponents who work your last nerve? You're going to decide whether you're going to be professional and polite in demeanor and attitude to court staff and clerical staff, the people that are there to help you do your job. Please decide and set your attention to be kind. And that may sound simple, and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood did come out this weekend, and maybe you'll have time to see it. His message is really profound. Be kind to other people. There's not enough kindness in the practice of law. The people who know me well know that when I was a prosecutor, I left no one on the battlefield. I was a fierce advocate for the people of the state of California because that was my job. In my job now, I take my job seriously, I run my courtroom seriously, but I don't leave kindness behind. Don't underestimate the value of kindness to yourself because ultimately, every act of unkindness and disrespect to other people is going to take a piece of you away. And those are the reasons why those lawyer jokes make their way around. <laughs> There's no reason for that. It is not mutually exclusive for you to be a strong advocate and win and prevail and be kind. There's a place for kindness, find it in your practice. Set your intention to be motivated. There's going to be days where money alone and your paycheck is not gonna be enough to motivate you to do your best. So you have to decide who you are. Do you bring your A game and do you do your best every time? Set personal goals for yourself. 
your first job will likely not be your last job. That's the beauty of this generation, that there's fluidity and an opportunity to do new things. So don't feel as if you have to be stuck in a job or a position that you don't like, but yourself. But don't be embarrassed to say, I don't know. Use it possibly can and in as many ways as you can. And taking care of yourself so you're mentally and physically and emotionally and spiritually healthy and happy is an important of your success. So eat healthy, exercise, surround yourself with positivity. It will help you have a more rewarding career as a lawyer. But work hard. Work hard because you will make a difference in our world. If you don't step up and work hard and do your best, then that's one less voice that will help our world become a better place. And I don't want to stand here and sound lofty when I say that to you, but it's true. Lawyers are the underpinnings of our society all the way back to the Greek and Roman times. So you will make a difference in the world, either for good or for less than good, falling into the stereotypes of lawyers. So decide for yourself what you're going to be and enjoy all of your practice of law. Before I conclude and do the swearing in, I want to alert you to an opportunity that Dean Prager briefly mentioned while I was the president of the Alumni <coughs> Association, we created a program called the Domestic Violence Advocacy Initiative. We raised funds through our annual gala of the alums, and we have raised enough money to fund scholarships, fellowships for people interested in working with the nonprofit Levin and Quinn, um, dealing with issues of domestic violence restraining orders, family issues, uh, child adoption, also immigration issues. It's a wonderful opportunity for those of you who are interested in that area of law. Maybe you don't want to practice it. I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of an attorney and counselor at law. The duties of an attorney and counselor at law to the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability as an officer of the court. As an officer of the court, I will strive to conduct myself. I will strive to conduct myself at all times. At all times with dignity. With dignity. Courtesy, courtesy, and integrity. And integrity. Congratulations, welcome to the state. I just want to say, in order to do that, um, there's a preliminary um, statement that has to be given by a sponsor and, um, as a member of the California State Bar and also um, somebody who's um, uh, accepted to practice before the Central District of California. I'm qualified to essentially present you to Judge Wright, um, which is what I'm about to do. I, Dove Weissman, do hereby certify as follows. I'm a member in good standing of the Bar of the United States District Court for the Central District of California. I know the petitioners for admission to the Bar of this court, and I affirm that said petitioners are of good moral character and are members of the Bar of the State of California in good standing on the date of the petition herein. Therefore, I move that the petitioners be admitted to the United States District Court for the Central District of California. Judge Wright.
schedule was in, it was gold. It was absolute gold. And uh, she cut a CD. And just <laughs> because this, this is valuable information. And I, I, I've been sitting here pondering, do I tell these kids the truth? <laughs> <laughs> this is such a happy occasion. Do I <laughs> I have, uh, last week and, and today, uh, I have had the honor and uh, the deep pleasure of uh, swearing in uh, a number of warriors who have passed through my chambers. And uh, I, I have to tell you, uh, this time it's been deeply moving because I know how tough this exam and the last few exams have been. And you people really do need to be applauded. I do applaud you. Last February, you are talking about the people who did such a great job last February. I had one young lady in my chambers that uh, took the February bar and, and the July bar before that. And the February bar before that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course the July bar. <laughs> Great face on it. She never ever quit. I even offered, come stay with me. You don't have to do anything. We'll feed you. Just all you have to do is study. Stop trying to be girlfriend and, and, and mommy and all of that stuff. Just come with me and study, and we'll get you through this. Well, she did it on her own. She let me swear her in. We brought tears to my eyes. This is a huge thing. You've been counseled, don't forget this moment. No, you'll never forget this moment. <laughs> you will never forget this moment. I'm gonna check it. All right, listen. <laughs> okay, you've sworn 